Okay, welcome back. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make our first tool path. Now to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and minimize some things. I'm going to leave my project over there to the right, just minimized. And now I'm going to start programming this part. So to begin with, I'm going to zoom right up. I'm going to select the top face of the part, right click, and I'm going to choose end milling. It's just a simple two and a half axis part. So we're going to go straight to it and start cutting. Now here, the software chose an eighth inch end mill. Why? Because it could. I'm going to go into my tool manager and look at all available tools. Tool 105 makes more sense to me. That's a half inch roughing tool. And I don't know if you caught this in the background. I'm going to undo this once. You see the tool path there based on the eighth inch. And as soon as I change tools, now it's based off the half inch. In real time, Top Solid updates the tool path for all two and a half axis operations. Kind of cool. I can go into here. I can set my feeds and speeds. Maybe I want this to be at 8,000 RPM, and maybe I want this to be at a, let's say, a 10,000 chip load. It's about 240 inches a minute. Jet coolant, really cool. The rest of the settings I'm going to say are good enough for right now. And I'll green check mark. And like that, we have our first tool pass. It's going to do its thing, plunges off the part, and starts roughing. Now what I want to do is I want to machine, let's say, this face right here or this face even. Let's just go straight to this face. To do that, I'm going to select my toolpath here, and now I'm going to hold control, put my cursor out on the screen over the visual toolpath, hold control, left click and hold, and drag and drop onto the new face I want. But be careful, you want to be on a face, and a face will always highlight in red and with red and black edges. And then let go. And like that, you've now faced off the part. Cool. Well, let's do this rotation. I'm going to take, again, same toolpath, and I'm going to drag and drop it to this face. And then I'm going to realize something. I forgot to tell Top Solid about my jaws. Uh-oh. Notice it just machined everything straight off, went right through the vise. That's no fun. So let's be a little bit smarter here. We have these 3D models. Let's use them. Now, there are two ways to use vices and fixtures in Top Solid. The first way is in every single operation, you can go to the Geometry button, and you can go add fixtures manually here. You just put your cursor over them, select them so they turn red, and here I used rotative selection to get them, and notice the toolpath instantly updated to them. If you want to set a specific offset away from them, expand it, offset, modify, and you can set your offset to what you want. And for that specific toolpath, it's going to stay 100 thousandths away. That's kind of awesome, but that's got to be done operation by operation, and maybe that's not what you're into. Maybe what you want to do is just always avoid them. So let's do it that way. What I'm going to do is come up here, and I'm going to switch to preparation stage. And preparation stage, this is kind of a moment in history between the loading of our machine, our part, our fixtures, and the creation of toolpath. Okay? It's a place for you to insert some cool functionality. And this is the start of that. So I'm going to go to my equipment tab, and I'm going to come right here to part environment creation. When I do that, it's saying for which part, because again, I could have four different parts on the screen that I'm programming right now, for which part do you want to include environment objects? So I want machine part two. I'm going to come over here. Notice it's highlighting the whole assembly. I don't want it to take into consideration everything back here. I mean, you could. It's a simple part. But if this was a big, complex part, you're adding things to the calculation that don't need to be there. So be a little bit smarter. Put your cursor over the, just the object you want and use that rotative selection again. And again, that's put your cursor over it, hold your left button down, and while holding it, tap your right once. Hold, tap your right. And now locally, we have grabbed those two jaws. Now, this just tells Top Solid that we want to use them as environment objects. Now we're going to switch back to the machining stage, and I'm going to roll up before all of my toolpath, and I'm going to activate the machining stage. Now, in all reality, if you want, you could do it after the first one because it has this has no effect on that toolpath, right? But just for good measure, we'll do it for everything, just for giggles. So now I'm going to go ahead and go here to the additional tab, and there's an option here called Environment Management. I'm going to come right to here. Oh, pardon me, right to here. Notice they're active. This is how far I'm going to stay away from them. 80 thousandths works for me. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to end inserting. And check this out. I'm going to go ahead and tell the software to recalculate. So I'm just going to select everything here, and I'm going to execute. When I do that, the software is going to re-execute the toolpaths. And what you'll notice is that 
Now the toolpath is avoiding the jaw automatically. I mean, think about how cool that is. It's wrapping around, it's doing what it's got to do, but it's doing it in automatic mode, which is fantastic. Let's make a couple more toolpaths. So we've roughed this face, we've roughed this face. I'm going to rotate this around. And for those of you wondering, I'm using a space mouse to rotate with. You can also hold your middle mouse button down. That's a rotation as well. You can also use the compass here to rotate with. You can even take the compass and dock it on a piece of geometry and rotate about that point. That's up to you. So what I'm going to do, take this toolpath. I'm going to drag and drop it onto here. Perfect. I'm going to take the toolpath again, control, drag, and drop it onto here. And again, you're using control, drag, and drop to create those toolpaths. And there I'm going to stop. And in the next video, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to set up the extended offsets that we want for each side of this part.